that okay, Mr. Graham? Yes, the cut's good. Leave it in. Baptista! Ah, Harry, Harry, be sure and shake off Grimio and Hortensio in that entrance in the street scene. Uh, si, senor. Mr. Graham, is it all right? In a minute, Harry. Bianca! Yes, Fred? I mean, Mr. Graham. I realize, Lois, that in nightclub work, you don't have to cheat. Oh, don't you, though? You don't have to cheat front, Miss Lane, but when you're on stage playing scenes with other people, you do. This is your first show, and I know it's hard for you. Do you mean thus or thus? We'll thus it later. <laughs> I want you to rest and relax and let your mind go blank. Blank. How blank can it get? Honest, those these and those. Mm. I hope I don't lash you up. Hmm. Now, sorry to have kept you waiting, Miss Vanessi. I think it would be better if we walked down together and then bowed to each other. Thank you. Now, how about a smile, Miss Vanessi? <laughs> Ready? You. Come on, Hattie. Call them on, Ralph. Okay, on stage, everybody. Come on, guys. Let's move it in here. Come on. All right. All right. I want to thank each and every one of you for the fine spirit you've shown all through rehearsals. Now, there'll be a gang coming down from New York. Don't let that worry you. This is a tryout, and I know we're going to make a hell of a show out of the shrew. After all, we owe it to Shakespeare. Not to mention the six other fellows sitting up nights rewriting it. <laughs> All right, thank you. That's it. Another opening, another show. In Philly, Boston, or Baltimore. A chance for stage folks to say hello. Another opening of another show. Another job that you hope at last. Will make your future forget your past. Another pain where the ulcers grow. Another opening of Another show. Four weeks you rehearse and rehearse. Three weeks and it couldn't be worse. One week will it ever be right? Then out of the hand is a big first night. The overture is about to start. You cross your fingers and hold your heart. It's curtain time and away we go. Another opening of another show. Another opening, another show.
prayers and hold your heart. It's curtain time and away we go. Another open. You got two dollars? What do you want two dollars for? Oh, well, it ain't for me. It's for Mr. Calhoun. Where is he? Why, he's a prisoner of the Yellow Cab Company. Bill? Hiya, Sarah Bernhardt. Hey, I want my fare. I'll shoot you for it. Double or nothing. Psst, psst. Harry, you got two dollars? Child, if I had two dollars, I'd retire and never do a lick of work again. <sighs> Paul, do you suppose Mr. Graham's got two dollars? Mr. Graham? <laughs> Not him. He's a producer. Can you wait until Saturday night? All right, Miss Lane, I'll lay it out. That'll be sixteen dollars. Bill, you've been gambling again. And I told Mr. Graham you went to the chiropodist. I went to the cleaners. How much did you lose this time? Ten G's. 10,000 fast little bucks. 10 G's? Did you sign an IOU again? Uh huh. Whose name did you sign this time? Frederick Graham. Mr. Graham? Bill, this is our big chance. Do you want to play nightclubs your whole life? Hey, we were doing all right, weren't we? Yeah. It's just as Mr. Graham said give a Broadway hook for a chance to play Shakespeare. And oh, Mr. Graham, your hero. Mr. Graham is a great actor, a scholar, and a gentleman. He's just culturing me. But there is nothing wrong between him and I. I mean, he and I. I know. Our... Bill Calhoun, I'll never forgive you if anything happens to Mr. Graham before I'm a star on Broadway. Gee, honey, I'm sorry. If only you meant it. Why can't you behave? Oh, why can't you behave? After all the things you told me and the promises that you
calling me up. Mm -mm. And don't stay. <laughs> I didn't say it. I indicated it. Half hour. Oh, thank you, Ralph. Oh, this heat. You know Baltimore. <laughs> How's the house? You know Baltimore. I know. There'll be deer running around the balcony. Next time I open a show here, I'll bring my shotgun and eat. <laughs> Half hour. Ha! So much for a Hollywood name. Your fans must have heard you were appearing in person. They're staying away in droves. Well, go ahead and answer it. It's probably Harrison. Hello? Oh, hello, Harrison, darling. I thought you'd be here by now. Oh, you're still at the White House. <laughs> I wish you'd come tonight, Angel. After all, it's your show. <laughs> yes, Angel, I understand. Huh. Yes, darling. Yes, love. I'm blowing you two kisses. <laughs> Hattie, Hattie, could you please send these roses to Miss Lane's dressing room with my compliments? Thank you. I see it, I see it. What is it, the Hope Diamond or Ali Khan's Emerald? <laughs> Did I show you? The star sapphire Harrison sent me. It was his mother's engagement ring. His mother must have worn it on her big toe. Yes! And now it's mine. Congratulations. <sighs> Do you know what day this is, Fred? Hmm. Our anniversary, and you forgot. What anniversary? The first anniversary of our divorce. Ah, yes. I was thinking of sending you a cactus. <laughs> but no money. I know, you're rolling in it. Yes. Every night before I go to bed, that's exactly what I do. I roll in my money. It's wonderful for the hips. Same old Lily. Who's this little monster, Harrison Howell? <laughs> no, dear, that's you. Age of two, bottoms up. Cute little fellow. Mind if I keep it? No. Oh. And you can have this, too. <laughs> What's this, a cork? Our first bottle of champagne. Mmm. Our wedding breakfast. Yes. In my apartment. You mean that one room you had over that Armenian bake? You're a fine one to complain. You didn't even have a room. Well, why do you think I married you? <laughs> <laughs> that was the season. We played in that little British makeshift of a Viennese operetta uh, that for some reason was laid in Switzerland, but the costumes were Dutch. Mm. And so were the salaries. No, I could have sworn that it was right after that flop revival of the Prince of Potsdam. Yes, I was understudying the lead. I was the youngest understudy in the business. No, dear, we were both in the chorus. <sighs> there was a waltz in it, do you remember? Something about a bar. Joe? Mother, you look ravishing tonight. You have made me the happiest of men. Oh, your highness. Wunderbar. 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 Drink lips in mine In the moonlight benign To the joy of our dream come true Wunderbar, wunderbar What a perfect night for love
Whose fault was it? Could have been your temper. Could have been your ego. <laughs> Let's get dressed. La 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 la. Hello. Who are you? What are you doing backstage? Fine looking fella. Plain <laughs> cut. What a figure. What a profile. Gentlemen, I deeply appreciate your admiration and devotion. What diction? Very elocutionary. And he does not spit when he talks. High type fella. As I was saying, this is all very flattering, but I received the public after the performance, not before. Whoa, what grace. <laughs> if I had to do something to him, I'd cry like a baby. <laughs> Gentlemen, come back. After the show, I'll be very happy to present you with my autograph. Oh, we got your autograph. That's why we're here. What? A little matter of an I O U. Here it is. Ten G's. <laughs> Mr. Hogan, that's our employer. He uh, regards this as a debt of honor. So, uh, how's about it, Mr. Graham? Well, you're mad. <laughs> Paul! 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 <laughs> oh, let's see that. Well, that's not even my signature. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they all say that. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised at you, Mr. Graham. You know, you signed this only this afternoon after quite a little game down to the hotel. Uh, we wasn't there, of course, but uh, Mr. Hogan says he plied you plenty with good liquor, too. Oh, you're really mad. I've been in this theater since 8 this morning. He forgot. Yeah, that's human nature for you. The minute a man signs an IOU, everything goes dark. Doctors call it magnesia. We cure it. I'd cry like a baby if I had to do something to such a high-type fella. Last week, remember that high-type fella? I used up three handkerchiefs. I don't like my face, do you? No. Oh, gentlemen, would you mind leaving? Whoa, any virile. <laughs> We now wish to express our best wishes for a magnificent opening and the success your brilliant talents deserve. I copied that out of Western Union. Heartiest felicitations. I made that up myself. <laughs> Mr. Graham. Try and jostle your memory. We'll be back. Knock, knock. Hello, Paul. Hi, a beautiful. <laughs> Here's some flowers. Paul gave them to me. They must be from Mr. Fred. Oh. Snowdrops, pansies, and rosemary. My wedding bouquet. Oh, Harry, he didn't forget. Of course not, honey. I'll get you some coffee. Strange dear, but true dear, when I'm close to you, dear, the stars fill the sky, so in love with you am I, even without you.
devil do you mean letting a couple of raving maniacs in my room in five minutes before curtain? Well, there was no one in here when I left. So, Ralph, next time nobody's to be admitted to my dressing room without a psychoanalyst certificate. Of course, they may have just been overwhelmed at meeting me. Oh, I'm sure that's it, sir. <laughs> Everybody feels the magnetism of, of your personality, sir. Off stage and on. Yes, Paul, you're not only the finest dresser I've ever had, but a true connoisseur of the theater. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Graham. Yes, you delivered my flowers. Yes, sir. You put the note in with the flower? Yes, sir. Good. You delivered them personally to Miss Lane, of course. Yeah, Miss Lane? Mm-hmm. I thought they were for Miss Vanessa, sir. Miss Vanessa! You, you don't mean you... Oh, you idiot! I'm sorry, oh. sir. I haven't been myself since Blue Blood was scratched in the third race. Moron! Go. Oh, Fred, darling, you didn't forget. You didn't think I would. <laughs> on stage. Good come, luck. Come on, Lily, let's go. I can't. My hands are freezing. No, you're not going to whoops, Lily. Oh, do you think they'll like me? After all, I've been away from the theater for a They'll all... love you. <laughs> I found it, Miss Lily. Here's a card that came with the flowers. Oh, quick, Hattie, give it to me. No, 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 no. You're not going to read that right now. Look. I'll tell you what I wrote. To Lily, the only woman I've ever loved, the only artist I've ever worshipped. Now, give the card to me and you can read it after the show. Oh, Fred, darling, did you really mean all that? With all my heart. <laughs> well, and that's where it's going, right next to mine. <laughs> I'm not nervous. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to whoops. And I'll never call you a b <laughs> Fred, dear. Never. You will, my sweet. <laughs> you will. <laughs>
pleasure humbly I subscribe. My books and my instruments shall be my company on them to look and practice by myself. Poor child. Signor Baptista, why will you let Bianca bear the penance of Catherine's tongue? Gentlemen, importune me no further, for how firmly I am resolved, you know. That is, not to bestow my youngest daughter before I have a husband for the eldest. Now, if either of you love Catherine, leave shall you have to court her at your pleasure. To cart her, rather. She's too rough for me. If you, Hortensio, or Signor Grimio, if either of you can find a husband, I would be most liberal. A husband? A devil? Indeed! Oh. 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 Thinks thou, sir, though you be very rich, any man be so very a fool to be married to hell? Calm thy noddle with a three-legged stool! Oh. I as lief take her dowry with this condition, to be whipped at the high cross every morning. So, Ooh. father, is it your will to make a stale of me amongst these mates? Oh, if I could only find a man who would thoroughly woo her, wed her, and bed her, and rid my house of her! I've made a haul in all the leading rackets Rich with roaring rich I happen to be And if thou wouldst attain the other brackets Marry me, marry me, marry me My purse has yet to know a silver lining Still lifeless is my wife's family tree but if for love unending thou art pining, marry me, marry me, marry me. I come to the altar of bread, Patricia, still sprain my decayed family tree. To give a social goose to thy position, marry me, marry me, marry me. No qualm, any Tom, Dick, or Harry, any Harry, Dick, or Tom. I'm a maid mad to marry and will take double quick. Any Tom, Dick, or Harry, any Tom, Harry, or Dick. I'm the man thou shouldst marry. Howdy, Tom. Howdy, Mom. I'm the man thou shouldst marry. Art thou Harry, Dick, or Tom? I'm the man thou shouldst marry. Bianca, she sings as sweetly as a nightingale. She looks as clean as morning roses newly washed with dew. Sweet Bianca.
Tentio. Blue Tentio. <laughs> what heavy wind blows you to Padua from old Verona? Such wind as scatters young men through the world to seek their fortunes farther than at home. And you? I came to study. I am glad that you thus combine the resolve to suck the sweets of sweet philosophy, the mathematics, and the botany. Fall to them as your stomach serves. No profit grows where is no pleasure taken. In brief, sir, study. As for me, I've come to wive it wealthily in Padua. If wealthily, then happily in Padua. If my wife has a bag of gold, do I care if the bag be old? I've come to wive it wealthily in Padua. He's come to wive it wealthily in Padua. Heard you mutter, sounds a loathsome lad you are. I shall not be disturbed one bit, if she be but a quarter wit. If she only can talk of clothes, why she powders her goddamned nose. I've come to wipe it wealthily in Padua. He's come to wipe it wealthily in Padua. Say, get Zeus, completely mad you are. But would it give me the slightest shock if her knees now and then should knock? If her eyes were a wee bit crossed, were she wearing her hair? She'd lost. Instead of that, till I make my day in the dark, they're all the same. I've come to wipe it wealthily in Padua. He's come to wipe it. Say, good God, but what a cad you are. Do I mind if she fret and fuss? If she fume like a Suvius? If she roar like a winter breeze on the rough Adriatic skis? If she scream like a teething brat? If she scratch like a tiger cat? If she fight like a raging boar? I have off stuck a pig before. Money, money for a rainy day. I'm out to find it wealthy in Padua. Well done, Jess. Well done. Nicely done there. This gentleman is happily arrived. But Petruchio. Thou art too much my friend. I cannot wish him to a shrewd, ill-tempered wife. But she is rich. And young and beauteous. But shrewd and forward, so beyond all measure, that were my state far poorer than it is, I would not wed her for a mine of gold. Peace, Lucentio, thou knowest not gold's effects. Therefore, if thou know one rich enough to be Petruchio's wife, tell me her father's name and tis enough. Her father is Baptista Manola. Her name, Catherine. Eldest sister to the fair Bianca. Mm. <laughs> sister! 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 Contention in my discontent! Catherine! Catherine! For shame! Thou hilding of a devilish spirit! Poor child! She weeps! She is your treasure! She must have a husband! I must dance barefoot on her wedding day, and for your love to her, lead apes to hell! Oh, was ever father thus grieved as I? A word with you, kind Impetune sir! Impertune me no farther, good sir, for how firmly I am resolved you... What? Whisper louder! Over here. That is indeed news, good news. Come in, Lucentio. <laughs> Lucentio, thou meat cock wretch! A 
virgin rather. For husbands are a boring lot and only give you bother. Of course, I'm awfully glad that mother had to marry father. Uh, a gentleman from Verona desires you in marriage. Well, then he best go back there. Oh, heavens. Ah, greetings, good sir. I hear, sir, that you have a daughter called Catherine, fair and virtuous. I have a daughter, sir, called Catherine. <laughs> I am a gentleman from Verona, sir, that hearing of her beauty and her wit, her affability and bashful modesty, her wondrous qualities and mild behavior. I am afraid my daughter Catherine is not for your turn, the more my grief. I see you do not mean to part with her. Mistake me not, sir. Or else you like not of my company. Well, you are more than welcome. Well then, what dowry shall I have with her to wife? 
for after my death, mm. the one half of my land. The fertile part? So be it. And in possession. 20,000 crowns. 30. 30! Father! <laughs> Go! Get thee to a notary. <laughs> I, when that special thing is well obtained, that is my love. Or is that all in all? Could I but see thy face? <laughs> Sir, why, it is a face like any other. I, there's the rub. Were thine that special face, a face which fills my dreaming? Were thine the rhythm grace, were thine the form so light and slender, were thine the classic style. I wrote it with my tongue in my cheek and my lips in a smile. But of late my poem has a meaning so new, for to my surprise it suddenly applies to my darling.
was not to her liking. But that is nothing. For I tell you, Father, I am as peremptory as she is proud-minded. And where two raging fires meet together, they do consume the thing that feeds their fury. I will attend her here and woo her with some spirit when she comes. If she do bid me pack, I'll give her thanks. I bid thee pack. Were thine that special face, ha! Oh. Grazia, signorina. And now, Petruchio, speak! <laughs> yes, Petruchio, speak! <laughs> Though thy message was not meant for me, you... Good morrow, Kate! We're on stage now, Lily. Good morrow, Kate, for that's your name, I hear. Well, have you heard, though, somewhat hard of hearing? They call me Catherine, that you speak of me. You lie in faith, for you are called plain Kate and bonny Kate, and sometimes Kate the cursed. But Kate, the prettiest Kate in Christendom. And therefore, Kate, take this of me, Kate, of my consolation. Hearing thy mildness praised in every town, thy virtue spoke of and thy beauty sounded, yet... Not so deeply as to thee belongs. Oh! Myself am moved to woo thee for my wife. Ha! Moved in good time. Let him that moved you hither remove you hence. I knew you at the first. You were immovable. Why, what's immovable? A joint stool. Thou hast hit it. Come, sit on me. Asses are made to bear, and so are you. Women are made to bear, and so are you. <laughs> no such jade as bear you with me, you mean. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, come, come, you wasp, in faith, you are too angry. <laughs> and now, Signor Petruchio, how speed you with my daughter? <laughs> oh, how but well, how but well. It were impossible I should speed amiss. We have agreed so well together that upon Sunday is the wedding day. <laughs> That give you joy, son. Tis a match. Amen, say we. Father and wife and gentlemen, adieu. I will unto Venice. Ow! I'm warning you to buy apparel against the wedding day. Sunday comes apace, and we will have rings and things and fine array. And kiss me, Kate. Oh! All right, Miss Venessi. You asked for this, and you're going to get it. <laughs> That is the last time you will ever lay your hands on me, Mr. Graham. You asked for it. May I remind you, the name of this piece is The Taming of the Shrew, not he who gets slapped. I am a realistic actress. Ha! Your latest picture is still in the can, where it belongs. Cuddling up to that copa canary. You're jealous. <gasps> That's what's the matter with you. Sending my wedding bouquet to that little tramp? That's no excuse for ad-libbing in none. Let my lovely Lois shine through Bianca tonight, and there'll be a new star in the heavens. Thou jerk! Oh, all right, all right. I sent the child some flowers. I sent her a card with the flowers. <gasps> May I remind you, I am free, male, and 31. 31? All right, 32. Oh. What has my age got to do with this? They were rich four years, and I'm proud of them. Every minute of them. You show me an actor who's done all I've done. My peer gint in London. You never got to London. My Hamlet in Dublin. You got paid in potatoes. Mashed. That's all you ever think of. Money, money, money. You know the problem with you? You've got no soul. Oh! Oh! What do you mean by poking me in the ribs? It's in the script. Oh, the hell it is! I couldn't teach you manners as a wife, but by God, I'll teach you manners as an actress. Not in this production, my pet. What did you say? You heard me. And here's something to remember me by. Oh! What are you trying to do? Kill me? <gasps> Ralph! Hey. Ralph Paul! Good God, I am bleeding. Yes, Mr. Graham. Get me some alcohol. Yes, sir. There's a law against attempted murder, even in Baltimore. Oh. Oh, my rib. Good God, I think she broke my rib. Ralph, how can you tell if you have a broken rib? X-ray. Where the hell am I going to get an X-ray? All I got's alcohol. Oh, that monstrous female. Literally a vampire. Ralph, am I bleeding heavily, Ralph? I don't see any blood. Well, here, what do you call that? Max factor number two. <laughs> I thought it was blood. <laughs> Skin's bruised, though. I Is don't it... see anything. Discolored. I don't see anything. That's all I need. A blind stage manager. Oh. 
Harrison, Harrison, I'll marry you tonight. You don't know what that villain has done to me. He's, he's beat me. I can't sit down. God, I said I can't sit down. Oh, I'm through with the theater. Send a car for me. Better yet, send an ambulance. I want to go where no one will ever find me. I'll go to Washington. <laughs> Harry, pack my things. I'll wear the blue suit. Yes, Harrison, he beat me. I am black and blue. I said I'm black and blue! Uh, I'm a realistic actor. I'm quitting right now. You don't think you can walk out of a show in the middle of a performance? Oh, no. I'll have you up on charges of equity. Oh! I will be glad, glad to appear before equity. I will bring photographs of what you have done to me in technicolor. And I'll bring my x-rays. Nothing you can say or do will stop me. Harrison is coming for me. You don't think that imbecile would let you out of the show? He's got $200,000 in it. Oh, he'll take it off his tax. You don't mean you would. Well, yes, I guess you do. You bet I do. You'll never play the theater again. Who wants to? Go! Oh, you're out of your mind! Get out! Don't, get out! Get don't, out. Don't. Oh, for heaven's sake. What a performance. What unction. Do you think the audience is getting it? It's way over their heads. Bunch of lowbrows. No, look here. We just wanted to check with you to see if you jostled your memory. I told you I never signed anything. Well, as a matter of fact, I did sign that IOU. He remembers. Mm. What a relief. So when are you going to pay this debt of honor to one of America's most respectable floating crap games? Well, that's just it. I haven't got it. Well, I would have at the end of the week if the show could run. Ooh, it'll run. Mm. It's entertaining, vivacious, and calculated to please the discriminating theater goer. You can quote me. Unfortunately, Miss Vanessi, my co-star, is quitting. Quitting? Right now. Temperament. Didn't like the way I played a little scene. She's dressing to leave the theater. I'll have to return whatever money is in the box office. She can't do that. Perhaps if you talked to her. <laughs> heart to heart. That's our speciality. <laughs> Lily! Oh, Lily! Nothing you can say or do will convince me to stay. Some very ardent admirers of yours. Come in, gentlemen. How do you do? Oh... <laughs> <laughs> ah, Miss Vanessi. <laughs> You've been my ideal for years. I married my wife because in a certain light, when it's kind of dark, she might pass for your sister. Huh. How sweet. Your glorious voice has been an inspiration to me and my wife. What a trooper. What a personality. Is it true, Miss Vanessi, you are contemplating quitting this high-type entertainment? I am. Now, you know, Miss Vanessi, the show must go <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I'm just transferring the weight off of one side and onto the other. <laughs> we got a financial interest in the success of this show, as well as personal. And Miss Vanessi, you got to play this show out tonight, and at least to the end of the week. When Mr. Graham pays his debt of honor. <laughs> Are you threatening me? <laughs> <laughs> Now, Miss Vanessi, let's talk it over. Fred? This is an outrage. <sighs> we sing of love, we sing of your love. He goes above. May we never sing of anything. A song about battle. I won't sing of babies who prattle. I get no glee from songs about the sea or cowboy songs about cattle. I won't waste a note of my patterns on socially significant matters. 
Bonnie Kate. I said come. Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh, Kate, content thee. I prithee be not angry. I will be angry. What hast thou to do? Forward to the bridal dinner. I see a woman may be made a fool of if she hath not the spirit to resist. Obey the bride, you that attend on her. Go to the feast and revel and domineer. Carouse full measure to her maidenhead. Be mad, be merry, or go hang yourselves. But as from my bonny Kate, she must with me. Nay, look not big, nor stamp, nor stare, nor fret. 
I will be master of what is mine own. She is my goods, my chattels, my horse, my ox, my ass, my anything. Touch her, whoever dare. I'll bring mine action on the proudest he that dares to stop my way in Padua. So kiss me, Kate, thou lovely loon, ere we start on our honeymoon. So kiss me, Kate, darling devil divine, for now thou shalt ever be. Thou shall ever be. Thou I shall never be. Thou shall ever be. Thou I shall never be. Yes, mine. Not thine. Yes, mine. You swine. Yes, mine. You swine. Yes, mine. Don't kiss me, Kate. I'll crack your pate. Oh, please don't pout. I'll knock you out. My price is price. I'll pluck your eyes. Don't kiss me, quick. Your rump will kick. Oh, kiss me. Don't do It's not her fish. She's not her fish. Oh, kiss me. Don't do it. I'll tuck her fish. She would not fish. Oh, kiss me. Don't do it. It's too darn hot I'd like to sup With my baby tonight And play the pup With my baby tonight I'd like to sup With my baby tonight And play the pup With my baby tonight But I ain't up to my baby tonight Cause it's too darn hot It's too darn hot It's too darn hot I'd like to stop For my baby tonight Blow my top with my baby tonight. I'd like to stop for my baby tonight. Blow my top with my baby tonight. But I'd be a flop with my baby tonight. Cause it's too darn hot. It's too darn hot. It's too darn hot. I'd like to fool with my baby tonight. Break every rule with my baby tonight. I'd like to fool with my baby tonight. Break every rule with my baby tonight But pillow, you'll be my baby tonight Cause it's too darn hot I poured 
according to the Kinsey Report, every average man you know must the first to play his favorite sport when the temperature is low. But when the thermometer goes way up and the weather is sizzling hot, Mr. Adam, or his madam, is not. Cause it's too, 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 too darn hot. It's too darn hot. It's too darn hot. It's too darn hot. It's too darn hot. I'd like to call on my baby tonight. And I give my all to my baby tonight. I'd like to call on my baby tonight and give my all to my baby tonight. But I can't play ball with my baby tonight because it's too darn hot. It's too darn hot. It's too darn hot. I'd like to meet with my baby tonight. Get off my feet with my baby tonight. I'd like to meet with my baby tonight Get off my feet with my baby tonight But no repeat with my baby tonight Cause it's too darn hot It's too darn hot It's too darn mm. hot I'd like to coo with my baby tonight And pitch some woo with my baby tonight I'd like to coo with my baby tonight And pitch some woo with my baby tonight But brothers, you buy my baby tonight Cause it's too darn hot According to the Kinsey Report Every average man you know Must prefer to play his favorite sport When the temperature is low But when the thermometer goes way up And the weather is sizzling hot Miss the gob for his squad A marine for his queen A G.I. For his cutie pie is not Cause it's too, 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 too darn hot It's too darn hot It's too, 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 too darn hot <laughs>
right on stage, everybody, now! Come on! Come on, come on! What are you, waiting for the Tony? Let's go! Move it out! Mo move it out! Oh. Kind strangers, thou angels in disguise, who did help me in my hour of need. T'were well you rested from your travels in yon chamber. Get ye hence, go to, go to. Come to. Huh? <laughs> come to, oh, come to. <laughs> well, my Kate, come, I will bring thee to thy bridal chamber. Yeah, please. I'm hungry. How canst thou think of food at a time like this? <laughs> Thus have I politically begun my reign, and tis my hope to end it successfully. My falcon now is sharp and passing empty, and till she stoop, she must not be full gorged. She ate no meat today, nor none shall eat. Last night she slept not, nor tonight she shall not. As with the meat, some undeserved fault I'll find about the making of the bed. And here I'll fling the pillow, there the bolster, this way the coverlet, another way the sheets. Aye, and amid all this hurly, I intend that all is done in reverent care of her. And thus I'll curb her mad and headstrong humor. He that know better how to tame a shrew, now let him speak. Tis charity to show. Oh, Kate! My body, Kate! My winsome, Kate! I faith, the woman shot her bolt. She has performed while I did act the dolt. Since I reached the charming age of puberty and began to finger feminine curls, like a show that's typically shuberty, I have always had a multitude of girls. But now that a married man at last am I, how aware of my dear departed past am I? Where is the life that late I led? Where is it now? Totally dead. Where is the fun I used to find? Where is it gone? Gone with the wine. A married life may all be well, but raising an heir can never compare with raising a bit of hell. So I repeat what first I said. Where is the life In dear Milano, where are you, Momo? Still selling those pictures of the scriptures in the Duomo. And Carolina, where are you, Lina? Still peddling your pizza in the streets of Taormina. And in Firenze, where are you, Alice? Still there in your pretty, itty, bitty, bitty palace. And sweet Lucretia, so young and gay. What scandalous doings in the ruins of Pompeii. Where is a life that late I led? Where is it now? Totally dead. Where is the fun I used to find? Where is it gone? Gone with the wine. A marriage game is quite all right. Yes, during the day it's easy to play, but oh, what a bore at night. So I repeat what first I said. Where is a life that Where is Rebecca, my Becky Wecky? Oh, could 
Peter should be cruising that amusing Ponte Vecchio. Where is Fedora, that wild virago? It's lucky I missed her gangster sister from Chicago. Where is Venetia, who loved to chat so? Could still she be drinking in her stinking peach palazzo? And lovely Lisa, where all you Lisa? You gave a new meaning to the leaning tower of Pisa. Where is a life that light I led? Where is it now? Totally dead. Where is the fun I used to find? Where is it gone? Gone with the wine. I've oft been told of nuptial bliss, but what do you do? At quarter to two, with only a shrewd a kiss. So I repeat what first I said. Where is a life that There's an ambulance out there for Miss Vanessi and a gentleman by the name of Harrison Howe. What? For he's raising a hell of a rumpus. I demand. Where is Miss Vanessi? Are uh, you Mr. Harrison Howe? Or some Harrison Howe. Where's Miss Vanessi? How is she? She's doing fine. Where is she? On stage. On stage? How can she be on stage? She's ill. Not that I know. Of course she's ill. She told me so herself. She's been assaulted by that brute, damn it. Oh, quiet. Shh. Look at here, Graham. He said quiet, damn it. Shh. Ain't you got no appreciation of the finer things in life? Man cannot live by bread alone. <laughs> what? Now be tolerant, gentlemen. Remember, Mr. Howell has not had the advantages that you have had. Eight years in the prison library in Atlanta. What? Uh, but Mr. Howell is a very distinguished man. He's the only Republican who didn't run for the nomination. How dare you assault my fiance? She hit me first. I don't understand this. She asked me to bring an ambulance. My dear, how? You fail to take into consideration the caprices of women of talent and beauty. Why, she may even say to you tonight, Harrison, I'm playing the show under duress. Call the FBI. A very efficient organization. Admirable coordination. Well, why would she want the FBI? Well, why would she want an ambulance? My dear Howell, your fiancé may ask for chewing gum, a miniature of the Empire State, or a fifth of Chanel Number no. 5. On stage, Mr. Gray. Look. Uh, oh, no, why art thou mad, Kate? He's so old. Harold? Why, Harold Murgatroyd? All right, doctor, nurses, I shan't need you. Harold! Harold! My name is not Harold. I am Harrison Howell. Harold? Don't you remember? In front of the Harvard Club? I had something in my eye, and you took me to Atlantic City to take it out. Now, look here, you must understand. I understand. Now, I rely on your discretion. I'm marrying Miss Vanessa, you know. Oh. oh. I understand. <laughs> After all, it was just a young man sowing <laughs> my wild oats. <laughs> you? And now you're a big man in Washington. Yeah, I have achieved a certain distinction. <laughs> I got my own park bench. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this way, Mr. Howell. Um, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. When did you initiate him? What a thing to say. And about a man I haven't seen in years. I assure you, there was nothing wrong between he and I. Just because a girl is good-hearted and normal and wants to get along with her fellow man. Oh, Bill, 
Why can't you behave? <laughs> oh, why can't you behave? How in hell can you be jealous? When you know, baby, I'm your slave. I'm just mad for you. And I'll always be. But naturally, if a custom tailored vet asks me out for something wet, when the vet begins to pet, I cry hooray. But I'm always true to you, darling, in my fashion. Yes, I'm always true to you, darling, in my way. I enjoy a tender pass. By the boss of Boston Mass, though his past is middle class and not back bay. But I'm always true to you, darling, in my fashion. Yes, I'm always true to you, darling, in my way. There is a madman known as Mac who is planning to attack. If his mad attack means a Cadillac, okay. Yes, I'm always true to you, darling, in my way. I've been asked to have a meal by a big tycoon in steel. If the meal includes a deal, except I may. But I'm always true to you, darling, in my fashion. Yes, I'm always true to you, darling, in my way. I would never curl my lip to a dazzling diamond clip. If the clip meant let her rip, I'd not say nay. But I'm always true to you, darling, in my fashion. Yes, I'm always true to you, darling, in my way. There's an oil man known as Tex, who is keen to give me checks. But his checks, I fear, mean that sex is here to stay. Yes, I'm always true to you, darling, in my way. There's a wealthy Hindu priest who's a wolf, to say the least. When the priest goes too far east, I also stray. But I'm always true to you, darling, in my fashion. Yes, I'm always true to you, darling, in my way. There's a lush from Portland or who is rich but such a bore. When the bore falls on the floor, I let him lay. But I'm always true to you, darling, in my fashion. Yes, I'm always true to you, darling, in my way. Mr. Harris Pluto Pratt wants to give my cheek a pat. If a Harris pat means a Paris hat, baby. Oh, la, la, we should sweet to show Fidel, darling, in my fashion. We should sweet to show Fidel. Ohio, Mr. Thorne calls me up from night to morn. Mr. Thorne wants cornered corn, and that ain't hay. <laughs> but I'm always true to you, darling, in my fashion. <laughs> yes, I'm always true to you, darling, in my way. From Milwaukee, Mr. Fritz often moves me to the Ritz. Mr. Fritz is full of schlitz and full of play. But I'm to you, darling, in my fashion. Yes, I'm always true to you, darling, in my way. Mr. Gable, I mean Clark, wants me on his boat to park. If a gable boat means a sable coat, and goes away.
is Harrison Howe giving my secretary. Timothy. Yeah, I'm just waiting here for Miss Vanessa. I thought I'd jot down my wedding itinerary. You're ready. It will be married in St. Thomas's 2.30. Got that? Yeah, wedding reception at the Waldorf, 4.15. Got that? Yeah, press conference, 5.38. Arrive Grand Central, 6.25. Depart, 6.30. Got that? Arrive Washington, 9.35. Arrive White House, 9.55. Got that? A conference with president and honeymoon with wife. It's a good trick if you can do it. Harrison, they told me you were here. Yeah, that's all, Timothy. Don't hang up, Harrison. I'm playing the show under duress. Call the FBI. <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> now, my dear, I don't mind bringing an ambulance, a doctor and two nurses. They're on my payroll, but the FBI is not. Now, I'm perfectly willing. In fact, I enjoy... Humor in the caprices of a beautiful woman whom I happen to adore. Caprices! These thugs threatened me. What? They're making me play at the point of a gun. They won't let me leave the theater. <laughs> now, my dear... Can't you see? They're gangsters! I guess it shows. Are you referring to two of the most promising graduates of the group? Not to mention the Guild Theatre, Inc., Civic Repertory, and Miss Pennyfeather's School of Charm, whose faculty they grace. And you're in cahoots with them. What? What can one say to libel? Should I say something? No. Discretion is the better part of valor. Famous sayings, top shelf on the non-fiction right-hand corner of Atlanta. No talking, no smoking. <laughs> Obviously, my dear, judging by their costumes and their speech, these men are not what you say they are. Harrison, darling, listen Do to me. Do you know what it means to blast a reputation? Of course not. You think nothing of dragging Harrison down here along with an entire medical corps for a whim. Now, my dear, I'd like to go over my wedding itinerary. I just dictated it to Timothy. Now, I thought we'd be married a, a week Monday, 2.30, St. Thomas. Is that'll give you just enough time to assemble a trousseau. Harrison! Darling, listen to me. I can't get out of this theater. Why not? These thugs won't let me. Why don't you try it? What? Go! Oh. Of course you can leave the theater. Well, that's what you want, and I can't say I blame you. After all, what's there in the theater to hold you? It's so tawdry. The dreary business of creating a part. The dull routine of watching a character come to life. The meaningless excitement of opening night. The boring, thundering applause of the crowd. The pictures in the papers, the parties, the idiotic men and women staring and whispering, there goes Lily Vanessi. It's dreadful. I don't blame you for wanting to leave all that when you have a chance for happiness, real happiness with Harrison. Thank you, Graham. I think I can uh, make the little woman happy. Mm -hmm. I never want to see the theater again, or you again. Oh, I envy you, Harrison. Never has a man acquired a woman with more sweetness of disposition, who's more even-tempered, has more poise, more gentleness, more sheer, unadulterated goodness. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> yes, Lily Vanessi's the wife for you. Get Lily Vanessi today. This is NBC. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying yourself. Enormously. And envying you. Me? The life you're going to lead with Harrison. Oh, it's so different from the one you had with me. I'll see to that. No quarrels, no bickering. I want peace. And you shall have it. Peace, quiet, stability. I got a place down in Georgia, 30,000 acres. You ride for days and not see a soul except my tenant farmers. You won't have to talk to a soul. I shall adore it. Of course you will. Wonderful life. What do you call the place? Solitude? No. Contentment. Oh, contentment. Just imagine. No cocktail parties, no malicious gossip, no backbiting friends. In fact, no friends at all except an occasional mongoose who'll drop in for dinner. Go on, go on. We'll see all the people we want to see in Washington. Certainly. Just imagine those little intimate dinner parties for the sparkling Supreme Court. Imagine the privilege of sitting next to one of the great judicial brains while he tells you the inside story of his sciatica. It always hits me here. Oh, it'll be a mad world. I'll still love it. I always rest up in my place. 
place in Aiken. I got a dining room there that could seat 100. Oh, marvelous! Eight years I had a dining room that could seat 1,200. Where did you say this was? Uh, the commissary at MGM. Well, I got my own projection room in Aiken. I got the finest collection of Mickey Mouse's in the country. Where's your grandma, huh? It's Mickey Mice. <laughs> Don't be a purist. Mickey Mice? I can just see a life at Aiken. Morning Harrison rises with the aid of a valet. You've been with me 20 years. Into his riding clothes, you into yours, a brisk canter. I'm mad about horses. And eventually you'll stop falling off. Ah! It's yoinks in the way back to the castle, a brisk shower, massage, and a little vitamin B1. Oh, well, that's making a new man out of me. And then Harrison takes a nap. Oh, no, breakfast first. Oh, yes, breakfast. You sit at one end of the long, long table, Harrison at the other. You pick up your telescope and watch fondly as Harrison slops his Wheaties. Wheaties are good eating. There's nothing finer. And then the nap. Oh, 20 minutes, rest the brain. Oh, 20 minutes, rest the brain. Then up, you dress, you walk, you contemplate the luxurious swamp, you toy with your toilets. Harrison wakes, you discuss this and that, the topics of the day. Will Big Frost escape Dick Tracy? I very much doubt it. <laughs> and then a nap. Lunch first. Ah, correction accepted. Lunch first. I got the finest chef in the country. But I got to watch my diet stick to the yolk of the egg, shredded raw carrot, and a glass of milk. Done wonders for me. Which you'll be able to see through your telescope. Then a nice, soothing, refreshing nap. 30 minutes. Rest the brain. You too will nap, Miss Vanessa. 30 minutes. Rest the brain. Then up, dress, walk in the formal gardens. Time for tea. High tea. Always refreshes me. And then a nap before dinner. 15 minutes. A quickie. Rested, you rise, you dress, you dine in that cozy little hundred-seater. <laughs> you play a brisk game of dominoes. Wonderful game. The mockingbird sings. The air is still. You feel drowsy. You yawn deliciously. Time for that final nap of the day. The long one. You stretch out. <sighs> Your eyes close. Get out! And then the mama bear said to the papa bear, <laughs> You bore me. Oh, 
Hello? Yeah, hello, Gumpy. I want to talk to Mr. Hogan. Because well, I want to report in, Gumpy. Mr. Hogan likes me to report in, Gumpy. Why'd you have to call you Mr. Gumpy? Where's Mr. Hogan? <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Certainly we'll come pay you a visit, Mr. Gumpy. <laughs> All right, Mr. Gumpy. Gumpy. Hogan. You mean it? Who's Mr. Gumpy? Mr. Graham. I guess that this is the end of our very pleasant association. I guess so. What's this? I guess we got to declare a moratorium. You see, Mr. Gumpy declared a moratorium. On Mr. Holden. His unidentified remains will be found floating in the bay tomorrow morning. Rest his soul. <laughs> so, that lets you out. And we must part. Well, does Mr. Gumpy have the executive ability, the enterprise, the imagination, or the initiative for the post? No. But he's got the post. <laughs> Miss Vanessi. What? We wanted to say au revoir. It's been a delightful experience. Very educational. We will always think of you. Should old acquaintance be forgotten. <laughs> what they're trying to say is you're free to go. You don't have to finish the show. Au revoir. Au revoir. Hey, come on. <laughs> Run along, Harry. Aren't you taking Sleeping Beauty with you? Let him sleep. Oh, don't tell me the bloom is off the rose. You are not Luella Parsons, and I don't care to discuss my personal life with you. Same old Lily. And I thought I detected a note, a, a new note of softness, a new humility. Even a spark of affection, a glimmer of love. You're not going to hypnotize me, Svengali. Lily, you can't walk out on me now. You walked out on me once. But I came back. That's just what it is, Vanessa.
Get out of this place, huh? I don't know. How did we get in here? Like a maze, you just go round and round and round. <laughs> it's like being on the inside of a birthday cake. Yeah. Today in society Go for classical poetry So to win their hearts One must quote with ease Aeschylus and Euripides One must know Homer And believe me both Sophocles also sat po -po, Unless you know Shelley and Keats And Pope Dainty Debbies will call you a dope But the poet of them all who will start and simply raving is the poet people call the bard of Stratford on Avon. Rush up your Shakespeare, start quoting him now. Rush up your Shakespeare, and the women you will wow. Just declaim a few lines from Adela. And they'll think you're a hell of a fella If your blonde won't respond when you flatter her Tell her what Tony told Cleopatra If she fights when her clothes you are mussing What her clothes might you do about nothing? Brush up your Shakespeare 
Shakespeare, start quoting him now. Brush up your Shakespeare, and the women you will wow with the wife of the British ambassador. Try a crack out of Troilus and Cressida. If she says she won't buy it or tight it, make her tight it. What's more, as you like it. If she says your behavior is heinous. Take a ride in the car, lameness. Brush up your Shakespeare, and they'll all cow tow. Brush up your Shakespeare. Start quoting him now. Brush up your Shakespeare, and the women. You well, wow. If you can't be a Hammond, do Hamlet. They will not give a damn or a damlet. Just recite an occasional sonnet, and your lap will have honey upon it. If your baby is bleeding for pleasure, let us sample your measure for measure. Brush up your Shakespeare, and they'll all cow. Tap for soup and they'll all tap tap. He faith and they'll all. And the merchant of Venice, where the sweet pound of flesh you would menace. If her virtue at first she defends well, just remind her that all's well that ends well. And if still she won't give you a bonus, you know what Venus got from a donus. Rush up your Shakespeare, and they'll all cow tow. Think so, and they'll all cow. That's my kids, they'll all Washington Heights dream. Treat the kid to a midsummer night's dream. If she then wants an all by herself night, let her rest every eleventh or twelfth night. If the cause of your heat she gets huffy, simply play on and lay on McDuffie. Brush up your Shakespeare, and they'll all cow tap. We trow, and they'll all cow tap. We vow, and they'll all.
dear Bianca and her newfound spouse, brother Petruchio, daughter Catherine. Feast with the best and welcome to my house. But where is Catherine? Where is she? I will go to Mistress Catherine and say I command her to come to me. I know she will not come. A fouler fought in mine and there an end. What is your will, sir? Darling? <laughs> Catherine, that cap becomes you not. Take off that bauble and throw it underfoot. Fie, what a foolish duty call you this? Kate, I charge thee, tell these headstrong women what duty you do owe their lords and husbands. I am ashamed that women are so simple to offer war where they should feel for peace. Or seek for rule, supremacy, and sway when they are bound to serve, love, and obey. Why are our bodies soft and weak and smooth, unapt to toil and trouble? And our hearts should well agree with our external parts. So, wives, hold your temper and meekly put your hand beneath the soul of your husband's foot. In There's a wench. <laughs> Come on and kiss me, Kate. So kiss me, Kate, and twice and thrice. Here we start living in paradise. So kiss me, Kate, the angel divine. Oh, now thou shalt ever be. Now thou shalt ever be. Now thou shalt ever be.
sight to your matey. Kiss me, Kate, kiss me, Kate, kiss me, Kate. 